Dearly beloved of the Lord, we thank God for this time. Let us pray to give thanks to God. Father God in heaven, we appreciate you for every opportunity and we pray that you bless us with your presence. We are in a world where there are lots of things that take us off um, our faith line. But we pray the Lord you encourage us. And as we read your word, pray the Lord your Holy Spirit will continue teaching us through in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've just been mentioning our faith line and we pray that God will continue with his support to us, with his, you know, his encouragement, holding us up. Friends, I welcome you very, very warmly and I appreciate God for this time again that he has given us to interact with the word that he sent. He sent his word to save us. He sent his word to correct, to rebuke, and that's what the word of God says. And so I welcome you to um, our time that we interact through um, Bible personalities that God has enabled to live their time in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. And because they lived their time, I have said before I say it again, to inform our times today. And so in our world where we live, we have good times where we enjoy ourselves. You find people laughing, you find people dancing, you find jubilation, you find celebration. But also there are also times when there are when the life is so low, when there is mourning, when there is grieving and things going not the right way. And so you go so low. But the word of God, which is all season, the word of God, which is all season, encourages us whether we are in difficult times or whether we are in good times. And so it is in this word of God that you will find everything in it here. You read it, you will find encouragement, you will find counsel when whatever situation that you are in. And so the person, the personality that we engage with now is a very common figure. I've just been mentioning times when we are happy and times when we are not happy, times when we are up and times when we are down. The name is Job. Job in the Bible, very common figure. But I just decided to have this episode. We just think through a few things. And just like I've said, we read it through, we engage with the scripture. Job leaves a lot of, you know, lessons to us. And is a very common figure, like I've already said, is a book which is born out of pain, which is actually first, at first sight, you look at it, um, because actually the man, they talk about him as a man who lived good life, he was wealthy, he was healthy, he was a wonderful man. But then the biggest part of the book is born out of pain and suffering. And not just pain and suffering, it is pain which is so crushing in the spirit, crushing in the body and crushing in every, I mean, in all situations. And so we look at this man. It's a book where Job and his friends, we shall just dive into a little bit there, the reason about suffering. Why suffering? Why must it be there? Why must it come? What, I mean, what should it be that actually someone should suffer? Why must a righteous person suffer? And that's the, the biggest question that actually addressed by the book of Job. And those of you that have read the Bible, we have different types of literature that we read. Some of them are historical books. Some are poetic. And this particular one is poetry. It talks um, the language, literally language, that actually you have to read and understand it better. But of course, actually understanding the background, understanding the context in which it is spoken. And so Job comes as a man who suffered, but never turned away from God. And this leaves a great picture for us. And the reason why we are reading it, the reason why we're talking about it, he suffered, but he never departed from God. And so it is at this time that I want to get straight to the scripture and read a few verses to set the, the pace for us. 
to look at what it is all about. I know people have read it. They have, you know, over and over. We have preached about it over and over. And even if you have not preached, someone has heard. Of course, actually, Job is one of the most common books, common names. Talk about suffering, someone will be quoting Job. But we just want to dive into it and see what it says a little bit more in this few minutes that I have. Now, Job 1, the Bible says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright one, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Very, very important there. And verse 2, they talk about his health and wealth. And so there were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that the man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And verse 4, that his sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them. Can you imagine a parent very, very conscious about the welfare, the spiritual welfare, the physical welfare of his children, that he would consecrate them. And he would rise early in the morning and often burnt and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and a curse and cast God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Now, listen to this. A parent. Now, if there is anything else that actually you need to learn, if you're a parent, Job also leaves for you a great lesson anyway, because look at his, you know, his continued concern about the welfare of his children. Of course, I can, you can be concerned for the welfare of your children, physical welfare, social welfare, which is actually you must feed them. You must provide for them physical things, clothing, food, housing, name it. But then this man leaves for me a huge lesson that actually many times I've talked about how he suffered and how he cried and everything that happened. But this one also comes out very, very vivid that Job was concerned for the spiritual welfare of his children. And so I just want to challenge us that all those of us who are parents, that we need to have this kind of spirit, having the, you know, the concern for the spiritual welfare, the spiritual upbringing of our children, of our family. And so this man Job lives for me, something that actually I have picked and I need to do something about helping my children grow in the line that pleases God. Try it. And even children need to know that actually Job was concerned about the welfare of his children. And so the children also should know that their parents get concerned for the spiritual welfare of their lives. And as much as we do social, we do economic, we do physical, other spheres of life, but spiritual is very, very important now. And it is how the Bible goes on to elaborate how the sons of God in verse 6 come to present themselves and before the Lord and Satan also came. You know, in as much as we live our life, Satan presents itself in various forms. And here that actually in verse 6, children of God were presenting, maybe it was a, an assembly, it was a convention, but the devil was in the midst of them. Now, we do things, we walk, we serve the Lord, but behind the curtains, the devil is not happy. Satan is not happy if you're doing something that's pleasing to God. Here we talk about Job. He did everything that he could to please the Lord. But the enemy, the devil, whom Peter talks about as like a roaring lion looking for whoever to devour. Now Job 
find is it very difficult here so the lord asked satan a few questions and the devil said i've been moving around rotating on the earth and then god asked have you considered my servant job and the devil said i mean that's you know does job fear you for no reason and it's actually the devil thought actually god some i mean job fears god because of his health because of his wealth and because of his family remember the number of camels that they have counted the number of oxen that they have counted the number of children that they have counted and so the devil in verse 9 asked does job trust you for no reason fear you for no reason have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side you have blessed the work of his hands and his possession have increased in the land and so it was actually giving reason that actually if it touched if the devil touched anything of this that job would actually um condemn god would blame god would deny god and so the lord said behold all that he has is at your hand only against him do not stretch your hand and so this permission comes and please read on you'll discover the, this conversation continuing and this is when uh, the animals were stolen the cattle were stolen everything was stolen everything went and and then eventually his children also died in chapter 2 and things like that but what's important that comes out when they had when job had that actually all these things that happened in verse 21 of chapter 1 job the bible says job made the declaration everything had gone remember it arose out of the conversation out of the something that actually the devil pleaded with god and said let me touch his animals let me do that and the thieves came and stole everything that job had but then in verse 21 this one stands out for us and said naked i came into the world naked i come from my mother's womb and naked shall i return the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord and this is actually a message that we always speak about and usually is quoted at barriers usually it's quoted when something bad has happened naked i came into the world but also it's an encouraging message but surely don't we come into the world naked with nothing and then we accumulate what we have here we accumulate friends here we accumulate wealth here we accumulate things here and so job made a statement that actually keeps ringing in everyone's mind and so it rings in your mind it rings in my mind and in all this job did not sin or charge god with wrong and so this is very very critical these two verses stand out so friends you discover that actually his animals went his health i mean and even his children you read on chapter was one two you get the story which you already know and so this man lost everything including his children all the seven there was something in a calamity befell and the house collapsed on them and all of them died and then the final thing that the devil did was on his his health and but god wanted the devil not to touch his life and so his skin was so went off and so you have read and you have heard that actually he lost his health he lost his wealth and he lost his children virtually remained with nothing so job remained strong but at one moment his wife came and said you listen to me you still hold fast your integrity curse god and die and of course actually those voices come when you lose something those voices come when you lose somebody and not that actually they should not place a blame on Job's wife like many people usually do but all of us are weak in every way and so such thoughts come but then job does mention that is chapter 2 verse um uh, verse 9 curse god and die and then verse 10 but job said to her you speak as one of the foolish women would we speak shall we receive good from god and shall we not receive evil in all this job did not sin with his lips you know in chapter 1 verse 22 and in chapter 2 verse um 10 actually speak a lot a man of integrity 
whether it is doing during bad times or good times, that Job did not sin with his lips. But of course, read on and you'll discover that Job, the questions that arose eventually in his life, he questioned, he wondered, but still said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, there are usually questions that we ask when you get overwhelmed, out of bewilderment, out of being overwhelmed, the questions that come and you ask, you know, someone can ask, but why me? Did this happen? Now it is, I have always told people, and I say it here, that the questions that you ask, not because you are faithless, but because you get overwhelmed by a situation. And so you ask, you know, questions, not because you don't have faith in God, but then you get overwhelmed by a situation and say, why has this happened? Why God, why have you allowed this to happen? So Job asked many of these questions, but he kept his integrity, his fear of, for God. And so, on a bigger picture, to us who are believers, who read this book of Job, because you read it from chapter 1 up to chapter 40, I mean those chapters there, the issues, this message that stands up, stands out for, because we read it from beginning to end, you saw the debate, you can see the debate, you can see the struggle, you can see the questionings that Job gives. But at the end, dear believer and I, it is a message of comfort and a message of hope. Because we live in a world in an, which is dry, waterless, and very, very archaic, very, very disturbing moments. Of course, all of us go through all of them. And we discover that actually all life is, you know, that a man comes into the world crying, lives grumbling, and then eventually dies unsatisfied. Now, that's the world. And Job gives us, gives us the picture of, the, of how the world is. But at the end, you keep your integrity. You keep your faith in God. So remember, we are living in this world of hopelessness, longing for hope and comfort. And Job, at the end, closing chapters, the Lord answered him. But then, People ask the delays that come and things like that. So there are moments of bad and there are moments of good, one following another, one following another, alternating each other. And that's what the world we are living in. Today you are happy, tomorrow you are not. Tomorrow, today you are not happy, tomorrow God gives a, a time of joy. And life continues. And it is actually a matter of understanding how God does his things. You may not finish him. You may not get everything out and know what, how God does his things. But reading such texts gives you the, the, the moments of saying, okay, God knows why I am going through this situation. And so I just want to write very, very quickly and mention a few things like here that now when temptations come, when sufferings come, Job's book shows us actually we should not be overly surprised because they come. Blessings come, yes, we thank God, but tempters, temptations, the tempter watches to see how happy we are. And then it comes also to disturb. And the devil mentions that you have always blessed the work of his hands. And so we discover that these things follow one another, like I've already said. But remember that temptations come and they visit human beings. And so the book of Job tells us to be on the lookout all the time that when you are tempted, when something calamity befalls, you should not forget that God is the one who takes good care of us. That actually things happen like that. We get overwhelmed, but continue trusting and believing God in everything that we are in. Now, bad things can happen to good people too. This is another very important standing out point that bad things can happen to good people as well. Spiritual alert, righteous, you know, good people also suffer. Now, Job gives us a picture here. And so that actually when it comes, you already know that a righteous person, a good person is not above this, the devil, 
does many bad things, even to the righteous people. So recognize that everything in life comes. But when it comes, know that actually God is in the know. Is it good? God knows and he has given you. Is it bad? You know that actually God knows. And that one gives you hope that since God is in charge, you remain confident that actually it will pass. And my prayer that I've always made is even when we're in a storm, storms come, but I say, oh God, help me that I will not be swept away by the storm, but I sail through, but may I not be bruised beyond. Yes, you can be bruised, but alive and heal and continue with life. And that's our prayer. Job was bruised badly. His children dying, his wealth going, his skin going, but eventually God restores. The hope is God is a restorer. The reason why he talks about it in, in, in Joel chapter 2 verse 5, the locusts come and eat. The locusts destroy, but God says I will restore what the locusts have eaten now. This book gives us the hope that actually even when things happen that way, God restores. And so another thing that actually you need to remember is the fact that God allows suffering. He allows it. In Job chapter 10, two, 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 chapter 2 verse 10, he says, tells his wife that we accept good things. But when good bad comes, we, don't, we should not deviate from God. And so we learn not to question God's goodness or say anything sinful against God. I know that it has happened, but God is still remains faithful that will take good care of you. He will take good care of you. He will take good care of me. And so God sometimes allows us to suffer. Now, examples are all over in this book. We have talked about some of them. Joseph in a pit, thrown there by his own brothers. That was suffering and tormented by, by the words that they spoke against him. Joseph suffered, friends, by the words of his own brothers, by the actions of his own brothers. But he remained confident that around time, the reason why he dreamt and he saw, you know, the stars and the moon bending and, you know, bowing. And, but he had the hope. So I ask you, situation should not take away your hope. Remain standing that God knows what you go through. And how about David before Saul? He also suffered. To the extent, actually, the spear came and he had to dodge it from Saul, the king. And, he, you know, he suffered running in the mountains, in the stones, in the desert. Now, suffering come, but it tests. So we have another example there of David. We also have the example of Daniel. We have talked about, and we shall continue talking about Daniel, about his three friends, Shedra, Kamesha, and Abednego. Now, you may go through the fire. Job went through the fire. But he survived. The reason why God told the devil, Satan, don't touch his life. So I pray that actually God will continue enabling us to live on, to see his goodness in the land of the living. That actually is goodness in the land of the living. So how about Jesus himself? How about Paul and things like that? So friends, I just want to mention that this book exists for you, exists for me that there is a life to live today. Whatever circumstances that you are going through, it is important. Now, one other thing that actually that I find, Job cried to God, by the way. Job wept. Job questioned a few things. Now, it's acceptable to cry. Now, some people think that when you cry and you're in a problem, that you have lost your faith. Now, some people think that actually, don't cry like a faithless person. Yes, Paul, Paul mentions, do not mourn like someone who, like people who don't have the faith, but physically here, there are questions that come, the pain that come, the sorrow that come, the anguish that comes. Now Job got overwhelmed and a few questions were asked. So the psalm, but the psalm is also, in the book of Psalms, you find psalms, they are called psalms of lament. Psalm 6, Psalm 22, Psalm 44, Psalm 130, and many others. Can you imagine, in Psalm 22, the psalm is, there's a question, Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And quoted by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so sometimes we get overwhelmed. And I repeat what I said, I say it again, that there are questions sometimes which come, there are cries that are made, sorrow that we have. 
not because we have lost the faith, but because we got overwhelmed by the situation. And so God understands us when you are overwhelmed. The reason why Jesus was, you know, making lost statements, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God. And now, but don't lose your faith, don't lose your hope. Now, the, the biggest quotation that you find in here as I finish here is in chapter 19, where Job mentions this, and we quote this every moment that we are burying people, that for I know my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Yes, I shall see God, whom I shall see with my own my, myself, and my own eyes behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. Now, friends, may God who has started this good journey in you, don't lose hope. Now, Job leaves for us great lessons. God remains God even in times of trouble. God remains God even when things have disappeared. I pray that actually God gives us the stamina to stand. And so Job leaves with us the value of patience, the value of perseverance, the value of holding our tongue, the value of friends. And we shall talk about Job's friends at another moment, but remember that God cares about us. And may God remain, stand with you to be steadfast in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.